Hey, this is Brian with Radical Prep. We're doing number 25 on the part two here. It says graph the function y equals the absolute value of x minus three on the set of axes below. So first thing I'm gonna do, uh, besides, <laughs> first thing I'm gonna do is make the screen visible. Um, if you didn't, I'm gonna kinda take this from the point of view if you had no idea about any tricks for this. You could do the t-chart, right? So you could do x, y, and then maybe go from, I don't know, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And you could plug in your points. And it's not really not that hard to do. X, uh, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. 0 just gives you negative 3 back. 1 gives you negative 2. 2 gives you negative 1. And we already see the pattern here. So it looks like it's just going to do that. Let's see what happens at 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. So we're already seeing kind of what's going on here, right? And you should kind of know that. Um, five gives you two. So it, look, it looks like it's gonna bounce back up. I'm not gonna go through all the math of it. So your, your line should look like at three, it should be zero. So I can put the tick marks here. Negative one, negative two, negative three. What am I doing? Negatives. Why did I write negatives? Not negatives. One, two, three, sorry. So I can write one, two, three, four, right? Put those numbers in. And same thing here, one, two, three, four. I mean, I'll just put five there. Um, so what do I gotta do? I gotta, I gotta graph it, right? So four, one, five, two. And it's just making a V. That's what absolute value functions are known for. They look like Vs. And they're basically lines that get reflected uh, over the x-axis wherever they're gonna go negative okay so you're gonna look like something like that so then I put the the label next to it x minus 3 okay now the quick tips or the things I can tell you compared to y equals the absolute value of x if I want to give you quick tips y equals absolute value of x plus 3 that moves up, up three units. What do you think minus three is gonna do when it's on the outside? Down three units. What do you think, well you should know now, that's to the right three units, it actually does the opposite thing you think. And x plus three moves left three units. So when it's in the parentheses, it actually does the opposite of the thing you would think it would do. Okay, so <clears throat> there's your graph. Knowing all that, I'm going to have to scroll down here so it's going to get a little screwy. The question is, explain how the graph of y equals the absolute value of x minus 3 has changed from our original one. And I gave you all those, I'll just I'll scroll back here. We should be able to say now that compared to the original one, and I'll, I'll do the original one here just to... I don't know, I guess show you. Y equals absolute value of X goes like this, right? Oop, that's a highlighter, but I guess it will do. Um, it does that. So now look at the two. What actually happened here? We shifted to the right three units. The entire graph shifted to the right three units. So I would say that's actually not a bad explanation. So I might write something like that. Um, the graph of, oops, sorry, the graph of, <clears throat> the graph of y equals x minus 3 is shifted 3 units to the right when compared to and sorry my handwriting is a little sloppy. I'm still getting used to writing with this pen. So the graph of this is shifted three units to the right when compared to the graph of graph of y equals x. Y equals the absolute value of x. And that's a good explanation. So you're done. That's pretty much it. All right. All right. This one says Alex is selling tickets to a school play. An adult ticket costs six fifty, and a student ticket costs four dollars. Alex sells X adult tickets and twelve student tickets. All right, 
write a function f of x to represent how much money Alex collected from selling the tickets. So f of x, it's got to be total money collected. Total money collected. Okay, so let's write what we know. We know that the adult ticket, adult ticket is 650. And what else do we know? We know the student ticket um, is, what did we say, four bucks? Okay. And then we want to know Alex sells X of these. So another way to think about it, we've got a total amount of tickets, right? Total tickets sold. What does that equal? Well, it's going to be X is the adult and 12 for the student. So we're kind of building our equation here. How much is each um, adult ticket? Well, he sold X of them, and they're at 650 a piece. So 650 X plus 12 times, and how much were those tickets? Those are four bucks. So that's nice. I can just kind of write that out. So it's 650 X plus 48, right? That would be my equation. F of X equals, and I'll put a box around it. I know your teachers sometimes to you know say box it or circle it. That's it. That's the equation you should have. Number 27. John and Sarah are each saving money for a car. The total amount of money John will save is given by the function F of X equals 60 plus 5X. The total amount of money Sarah will save is given by the function G of X equals X squared plus 46. After how many weeks X will they have the same amount of money saved? Explain how you arrived at your answer. So what I might do for this one, I might even write step one, set equations equal. Okay, why would you do that? Well, set equations equal. Well, it says they want, we want to know when they will have the same amount of money. So if each one is an equation for how much they make or how much they save, you just got to set them equal. So let's do that. 60 plus 5x. Remember, you want to be as neat as possible. You got older people reading your exams. We're not trying to make them squint and decipher your crappy handwriting. So be courteous and actually be neat. It might save you some points. You never know what kind of mood these people are in on test day. All right, uh, let's see here. So I'll do, I'm just going to bring this information over. So x squared, 46 minus 60 is a negative 14. And, uh, oops, let me do this real quick. I put it in the reverse order, sorry. Because um, I want to make it look like a quadratic. So I'm going to do uh, x squared uh, minus 5x minus 14. And the whole thing equals 0, right? Okay, so we have to double bubble this. And we get x here, x here. And you got to ask yourself, how do you make a negative 14? Well, I can do 7 and 2, and I feel like those numbers are pretty good. Which number is going to be the negative one? Well, I'm going to put negative with the 7, and I'll make the 2 positive. Because when you go to FOIL that out, if you if you checked it, uh, you know, first, outer, inner, last, it works, right? Because negative 7 and 2 is negative 5x. So we have the right numbers here. So now the question is, um, I would say step 2 is uh, find the correct root, the correct R-O-O-T, root or answer. And the reason I say it like that is because in, when you have a, a double bubble here, remember you got to take the negative of each uh, one on the inside, so X is negative 2 and 7. So that means that she will have, or they will have the same amount, they will have, saved sorry my hand writing is a little sloppy with this pen they will have saved the same amount same amount in seven weeks seven weeks okay do we have to explain ourselves any better what do you guys think um explain how you arrived at your answer step one set the equations equal Step two, find the correct root. 
they will have saved the same amount in seven weeks. I think that's pretty good. You might want to add another sentence just saying that maybe something like I set the two equations equal because you won't want to know um, when the amount they saved is equal. Something like that. I think this would suffice though. All right, but your answer is seven weeks.